When we qualitatively described the BJT transistor operation in a previous video, we described it with a forward biased base emitter junction and a reverse biased base collector junction. So the base emitter was forward biased and the base collector was reverse biased. We now recognize this as the active region or the linear region of the BJT transistor. In this video, we'll derive expressions for the terminal currents of the BJT in the active region. In the diagram, the terminal currents I sub B, I sub C, and I sub E are defined. These reference directions reflect the direction of conventional current, not the electron current, but the conventional current flow. And as you notice, these directions are the opposite directions of the electron flow. So once again, we're going to be careful and precise in our terminology. We'll start by deriving the collector current. To do so, we'll observe that the collector current is approximately equal to the change of electron concentration across the base, or the change in the concentration of the electrons starting at the, at the uh, emitter base junction and then going to the base collector junction. So the change in concentration that we see there will equate to, or at least will be related to, the collector current. I sub C differs slightly from that because of recombination. So we've got N sub P. N sub P is the um, electron concentration in the base at zero means at the, the junction itself. And so the concentration of the electrons at the base emitter junction we're going to call N sub P zero. Now because of the reverse bias voltage at the collector junction, there are no, um, no electrons at that junction, so the concentration there is zero. It's not quite linear because of the recombination that occurs in the base, but that recombination again is relatively small due to the small concentration of holes and the fact that the base is narrow, um, is, is much narrower than either the collector or the um, emitter is. So even though there is some slight variation between those, we're going to neglect that for this derivation of the uh, collector current. This electron concentration at the um, base emitter junction, N sub P0, is a function of, or an, is exponentially related to, the base to emitter voltage. This is effectively the um, exponential relationship that we have at the PN junction, where N sub P0 is the thermal equilibrium of the electrons in the base. As I mentioned then, the electron current is then proportional to the change in the electron concentration as a function of x or across the width of the base. Now the proportionality constant are out here, A sub E is the cross-sectional area of the base emitter junction, Q of course is the uh, charge constant, and D sub N is the electron diffusivity in the base or the diffusivity of the electrons in the base. We can approximate this derivative then, as we've already talked about, as the slope of this line here, where the slope on, can be calculated as the change in electron concentrations, n sub p zero on this side and zero on this side. So the change being negative n sub p zero minus zero divided by the width of the base. Now n sub p zero, we've got an expression for that there, which when we plug it in, and then rearrange it, we come up with this electron current flowing across the base and into the collector. We can write it then in this expression. And recognizing that the change in here, again, we're approximating that as being the collector current. So I sub C then is equal to this constant here times E to the base emitter voltage divided by the uh, thermal voltage V sub T, which again we typically approximate it to being about 25 millivolts. So I sub C, the collector current, is equal to this saturation current I sub S, which is equal to this term right here, E to the VBE divided by V sub T. You'll notice that the change, the negative sign here, 
had to do with the fact that the concentration is decreasing as we go in this direction. So by defining I sub C as the current flowing in to the collector, we lose the minus sign and we have then that I sub C is given by that expression. Let's now consider the base current I sub B. It consists of two components. This first component, IB1, is the um, minority diffusion current for the forward biased uh, PN junction here, the base emitter junction. It's a minority carrier, it's a small carrier, or it's a small current component because the, uh, the doping concentration in the base is so small. But one component of the base current is the diffusion current going from the base into the emitter. I sub B1 we're calling that. I sub B2 is the small or corresponds to the small percentage of the electrons that were emitted from the emitter into the base that then recombine. Again because the base is relatively narrow and the doping concentration in the base is relatively small, this recombination component is relatively small. But we'll include it in our calculation for I sub B. You'll note that both of these components are functions of the base to emitter voltage. IB1, the diffusion current, is just the diode equation that we saw back in chapter, uh, chapter 3. And IB2 is a function of the concentration of electrons. And the concentration of electrons is a function of the base to emitter voltage. So both of these components or functions are exponentially related to the base to emitter voltage. So the total current I sub B is equal to the sum of those two. And the important thing to realize is that the base current is exponent exponentially dependent upon VBE. We recall, we recall, we recall from the previous slide that I sub C was also proportional to or exponentially related to VBE. In other words, the base current and the collector current are both proportional to this term. And we define it now a proportionality constant to to relate the base and collector currents and we need to remember that this is in the active region. In the active region I sub B is equal to 1 over this constant beta times I sub C. Where beta is a parameter of the transistor itself. Generally speaking it's a relatively large number somewhere between 50 and 100 uh, maybe up to 200 or even more depending upon the transistor itself. So the point is is that the collector current, we can rewrite this then, that I sub C, the collector current, turns out to be proportional to the base current. And we can then write it here in, by substituting the expression for I sub C. We have then that I sub B is equal to I sub S over this beta term times that exponential term. Looking at the diagram, we see then that the emitter current is equal to the sum of the base and the collector currents, or I sub E is equal to I sub B plus I sub C. We saw in the previous example that I sub B was a, or that I sub C was a constant multiple of I sub B, and so replacing I sub C with beta I sub B, we then get I sub E in terms of I sub B, and that is that I sub E is equal to this beta term plus 1 times I sub B. The plus 1 corresponding to I sub B plus beta I sub B. Now we can rearrange this and substitute in here I sub B is equal to I sub C over beta. And we can then get I sub E in terms of I sub C. Or equivalently, I sub C in terms of I sub E. This expression right here, beta over beta plus 1, is sometimes assigned an a, a yet another constant, alpha, where alpha is a number very close to 1, but slightly less than 1. So what do we see? We see that I sub B, the smallest of the currents, is, the, um, is a function of or is, is related to I sub C by the constant beta, or 1 over beta. So we have I sub B, Let's write it this way, um, I sub B, then I sub C is equal to beta times I sub B, and I sub E then 
is equal to beta plus 1 times I sub B. So I sub C is significantly bigger than I sub B, and I sub E is a little bit bigger than I sub C, and significantly bigger than I sub B. And again, all of these relationships apply only during the active mode of operation.